Welcome to this presentation on using Ancestry Library Edition, a free version of the popular Ancestry database that's available through participating libraries, including St. Albert Public Library. This presentation will include an overview of the kinds of information available in Ancestry Library Edition, some demonstration searches, and tips for searching for and evaluating information you find in Ancestry. What is Ancestry Library Edition and how does it differ from the version of Ancestry that we see advertised on TV? The TV advertisements are for Ancestry.ca or .com, a version of Ancestry that's intended for individual paid subscribers. Those subscribers can search billions of historical records, build their own family trees on the Ancestry site, and have contact with other Ancestry subscribers. Users of Ancestry Library Edition can search those 11 billion or so historical records, the exact number just keeps on growing, and can see family trees that Ancestry subscribers have agreed to make public. Typically, Ancestry Library Edition users must be in a participating library to use it. During COVID-19, Ancestry has made this version of Ancestry available from home for those who have a valid library card at a participating library. To get to Ancestry Library Edition on the St. Albert Public Library site, go to sapl.ca, click on eLibrary, select Research, select Ancestry Library Edition. Type in the 14-digit barcode on the back of your library card with no spaces. Type in your PIN, which is typically the last four digits of your phone number. Click on Login. This is the Ancestry Library Edition homepage. Before we click on the green Begin Searching button, I'll point out some of the different kinds of records you can look for on this site. Census records, birth, marriage and death records, military and immigration records. When you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see other categories of records, including tax, land, and probate records, pictures, city directories, and public member trees that Ancestry subscribers have created and agreed to make public in Ancestry Library Edition. We'll return to those trees later. For now, we're going to opt to search all the historical records by clicking Begin Searching. This will take us to the basic search screen. Type in the first and middle name or names, if you know them, of the ancestor you're looking for. Type in the last name using your best guess at the spelling of the names. Type in the name of a place where your ancestor lived. If you don't know the name of the city, town, or village, type in what you do know, even if it's only the name of a country. Notice that when you start to type in a place name, possibilities appear in the drop-down menu. When you see the place name you're typing in, select it from the drop-down menu. Type in a birth date or approximate birth date if you know it. Another option is to use the calculator beside the birth year box. For example, you may not know John Mark Wilford's birth year, but you may know that he was 39 when he married in 1911. Type that information into the calculator and let it do the math. The many results are ranked by relevance with the records most likely to be associated with your ancestor near the top of the results. That said, do scroll further down to see if there are other records about this person. In this case, there are several. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to look at the first result. Hover over it and a pop-up will tell you about the information included in this record. To find out more, click on View Details. You'll see information about the source of the record and you'll receive suggestions from Ancestry about records you might want to look at later. If there's a photograph of the original document, click on View. Once you've determined that this record is one that you'd like to keep, click on the green Save button in the upper right corner 
and choose to either send the image home by emailing it to yourself or save the image on your computer or a flash drive. When you opt to email the record to yourself, you'll receive an email from Ancestry, which will include links to all the records you, cho you chose to send home that day. Use the back button to return to your results and continue to look through them to see which other ones might be relevant. If a record in your results provides some new information about your ancestor, for example, his father's name, you can choose to edit your original search and add that new bit of information. Click on Edit Search. Click on Show More Options. The screen will now allow you to add new information pertaining to events in your ancestor's life or about his family members. In this case, I'll add his father's name. Click on search. You can do a more targeted search by looking for and searching within collections of records from a particular part of the world. Oops. To do this, click on search in the navigation bar near the top of the screen. Select all categories from the drop down menu. This takes you back to the basic search screen and the explore by location map below it. If you have ancestors in Scotland, for example, use the map to click on Europe. And then Scotland. You may search within any of these individual collections of Scottish records by clicking on the collection name. You could search within all collections that originate from Scotland by clicking on See More About Scotland and clicking on the green button there. You may also be able to focus your search further by looking within documents that originate from a particular part of Scotland, for example, Perthshire. This targeted geographical approach to searching for ancestors is easy and definitely worth a try. To demonstrate some other search tips in Ancestry, we're going to look for a passenger list within the immigration records. To do that, we'll click on search in the navigation bar and select immigration and travel from the drop down menu. The first name of the person I'm looking for was Abraham, but he was most often called Abram. Which version of his name, Abraham or Abram, should I type in here? One option is to use a wildcard to accommodate both of those possibilities. Type in at least three letters of the person's name and use an asterisk for letters that could be different depending on which version of his name he used when he booked passage on a ship. If Abraham's last name was Johnson, and I wasn't sure whether to search for Johnson with a T or Johnson without a T, a wildcard could help there too. Use a question mark as a wild card if it is standing in for a single character or no character. In fact, Abraham's last name was Fleming with an A. It's possible that my search results will include Fleming with an E or Fleming with an E and two M's. You can, if you like, restrict your search to a particular spelling of a name. In this case, Fleming with an A. If this approach doesn't produce any results, remove the exact option and try again. I've added other information about Abraham's immigration to North America that has been passed down through his family. The keyword field lets you add additional information about an individual that may be helpful. For example, his occupation. In this case, I've added the ship's name, which was passed down through family lore. My search for the Fleming family's passenger list quickly led to this result and an image of the passenger list. Ancestry Library Edition users can't build their family trees in Ancestry Library Edition, but they can look for ancestors and family trees that Ancestry.com or .ca subscribers have created and agreed to make public. Ancestry does not guarantee the accuracy of trees submitted by subscribers. And though the trees vary in quality and reliability, 
it's worthwhile and interesting to see what you might find there. Return to the Ancestry Library Edition homepage and scroll to the bottom to access, to access the public member trees. I'm going to look for an ancestor named Elma Victoria Cullum. The first three results look promising. Let's look at the first. What makes this tree particularly valuable is the number of sources included in the tree. The tree's creator has shown his or her work what the so-called facts of this tree are based on. It's worthwhile to click on gallery to see if there are photographs. In this case, there's a picture of Elma's headstone and images of the various historical documents on which some of this tree is based. If a public member tree names your ancestor, but does not include sources, take the time to look for those documents. Fortunately, you may be able to find some important historical records in Ancestry Library Edition. The Ancestry database is made up of collections of historical records. Each of those collections typically contains hundreds, thousands, or millions of records. If you're wondering if Ancestry has a particular collection or a particular kind of collection, the card catalog is the place to look. To get there, click on search in the navigation bar and select card catalog from the drop down menu. When you first go to the card catalog, all of the collections listed on the first few pages will have a green new or updated button beside them. This indicates that these collections were added to Ancestry within the past 90 days. It can be worthwhile to look through these new and updated collection titles to see if there's anything you'd like to search. If so, click on the collection title and search that collection alone. To look for a particular collection or kind of collection, do a keyword search. For example, if you're wondering if Ancestry has Canadian homestead records, search for Homestead Canada. Click on a collection title within the results to search for your ancestor within that collection. Ancestry Library Edition offers you blank charts and forms that you can download and save on your computer or print for your own use. Click on charts and forms from the navigation bar across the top of the screen. The first set of charts and forms can help you organize and track the results of your research. The second set include blank census forms from the US, the UK, and Canada. Having a blank census form from a particular census will help you decipher and understand the information you find on a completed census form. This, that concludes this introduction to Ancestry Library Edition. Good luck with your research and have fun.